Welcome to this week's Ask EMBN, where we get to answer all those questions that you've been leaving in the comment section down below. Hashtag Ask EMBN. Mm -hmm. Now we've got some cool in. ones, yeah. Get this one's it. in from Brian Little. He's saying, hashtag Ask EMBN. It's interesting that some EMTBs use a large diameter front tire and a small diameter wider rear tire, just like the Spectral on. Uh, just like off-road motorcycles, are the combined wheel diameters and tire sizes chosen to ensure that the outer, outside diameters are the same? And why do analog MTBs tend to use a wider front tire and a narrower rear on the same wheel size, front and rear? So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of questions so going on there. Cut the question real short. Mm. So you're there wondering why you're on 29 front and mm. 27.5 back, but yeah. with like a 2.6 or a 2.8. Yeah. So yeah. that's a plus size tire. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm going to go and say traction. Yeah, traction, you're right. Yeah, obviously that big tire is going to provide a load of bite from the rear. And the front wheel being a 29er just gives that increased rollover, a lot more precision mm -hmm. and a bit more control when things pick up the speed. And also slowing the e-bikes down as well. There's a lot of braking going on through the tires. Mm -hmm. So from that big chunky back tire. But yeah, I think it is definitely a crossover coming from the motorbike trials and motocross yeah. bikes. It seems like a perfect balance to me. Well, I think so. Nice. Uh, John Crossley, he's saying, I want to e-bike for distance, but they all look naff. I have a white 805 pedal power bike, but would like to see a tour of mountain bike looks. I'm on old Git 58, but I regularly it's do 20 miles along trails and canals. I would buy an e EMTB, but I can't get the distance. Around 70 miles would be good. Any suggestions? 70 miles. Um, I did a little bit of homework about this. Mm. Uh, so if you're climbing, is in the max eleva uh, elevation you can get to is... 1500 on yeah, eco like, yeah, so, like yeah um but the distance wise you're saying about 70 miles and you said you're riding like kind of canal pass and things like that so a basic 500 watt hour bike you might just about eke out 70 miles in eco but i think the best bet for you would be probably check out some of the high bikes that actually do a dual um, battery mm. system so yes, they they do. A, you can mount two 500 watt hour batteries so you've got a thousand watt hours of battery that bike will be definitely capable of doing uh, 70 miles no. on those two batteries. There you go. And you could be using more than Eco. It's got all the things like the mounts and uh, it's kind of like a trekking bike as well. So you've got mudguard mounts. Could be right up your street, but um, check out 100K, the fun way that's using two batteries to get the most out of your e-bike. 103.2K, two bars of battery left. Range 33K left, four hours 47 move in. Average speed 21.5 and the max 69.5. We're nearly there on the Garmin as well, 61.8. So we need 62.13 to make it 100K. So nearly at my house now. So I'm gonna keep rolling. Get that 100K on the Garmin too. Question coming from Bjorn. He says, are you going to be reviewing the Garmin 830 and how it performs navigating on trails and features? Yes, well, not a review, but we have used them. I've got one, you've got, got one. one. Yeah. Uh, super cool little computer. Mm. It can it can like show how high you're going, how many yeah. jumps. How many airtime? Air time, that's air it. Time, that's it. Yeah. And you can see what the grit's like on the trail. Mm -hmm. uh, it's super cool little computer. Yeah, and all your flow as well, isn't yeah. it? How far, how fast and how well you're flowing down the trail. Exactly, yeah. Combines with all like the big apps like Commute and things. Like I recently downloaded a, a 50 mile ride trails I've never ridden before, downloaded it straight to the Garmin, followed that thing, it was absolutely yeah. perfect. Didn't go make a wrong turn once, really opened up my yeah, eyes yeah. to the trails that are around on the front door. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's pretty cool that um, Neil and I did a video mm -hmm. on uh, who's got the most flow, and it's pretty cool how you can have a bit of a contest between mm -hmm. the two. It's pretty cool. But we did do a video on uh, A-Line Air Challenge, which is pretty cool out in Whistler. Take a look at this. Here he comes. Here he is. Wow. Oh, God. Oh, oh my goodness me! What did you get? What's the score? 1.36. 1. 1. 1.36 seconds. Yeah. In the air. Oh god, that's a long time. <laughs> you're, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. That was actually harder than I expected. Oh man, you... you're in for a treat. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was high, and I noticed you came in like a little bit slow to I, pop I, it. That was my strategy, I mm -hmm. think. You know, that's a the bit slower, and then. I just set it up and say, Yeah. He's going for a speed approach. Oh! Oh no! 0. 0.5! 0. 0.5! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, I gotta oh I gotta go high. You need to. Otherwise I will win the first challenge. 
Nah, watch this. <laughs> watch, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> go slower, go slower. Slow down, slow down. Oh! Oh my goodness me. 1.36. Oh! <laughs> it's a tie. Wow, it looked absolutely amazing. Pretty cool. Greg nearly went over the bars. So yeah, he thought like we did this long jump and he just. Oh. Sailor. Horrible situation. Right, King Louis, he's saying, ask ENBN, what is that crackling noise is on your Levo? So that's Steve's video. Uh, mine has the same, and I do not find where it's coming from. So creaking and cracking can ruin your ride, can't it? You know? It can. Suspension noise, like mm. all your pivots, especially if it's not a well-maintained bike. Yeah, I think it's a process of elimination, really. Um, real good way of checking if anything is loose on your bike. You should do a basic drop test. You pick yeah. it up in the air, drop it down. If anything is like rattling around, it should show up in that. But creaking and cracking, just a process of elimination, really. Mm. You do it stood up, you do it pedaling, you do it sat down. Um, freewheeling and braking, you just kind of like you just got to figure yeah, out where figure it's all it out, coming it from. It can be annoying. It can be saddle ra rails creaking. It could be your stem and your yeah. bars creaking when you're cranking. Pedals a bit worn out. Yeah, cranks, bolts, you name it. But it is a nightmare. But just try and find that creek. Get a bit of lube in there if you can lube that area and try and get rid of that creek. Mm -hmm. But uh, question coming in from Joe E. He says um, slightly off topic. Uh, questions for you. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between the Specialized? compared to the Canyon. So like all bikes, I think. Yeah, so we've got, obviously, I'm not too sure what models you mean. On the Specialized, I ride the Levo and the Kinevo. And likewise with the Canyon, I ride the Neuron and the Spectralon. So there's quite a few different bikes, but they all have their plus points. Um, I think the best thing about the Spectral is, is a good, capable all-rounder, 150 mil travel. You can ride it cross country. You can go jumping on it. You can do free ride stuff, downhill, you name it. Obviously, there's Shimano motor on there. Mm. Got the Neuron, which is the 29 inch version of that. That's a great cross country bike. Shimano E8000 uh, motor, external battery, so you can stick a couple of batteries if That's you want to go good. a long way. Uh, the Kinevo is more of a downhilly kind of free ride bike, 180 mil travel bomb proof it's got obviously that big powerful silent bros motor on there so mm. that's pretty cool and vice versa you've got the levo which is the 29er um again with silent motors nice lightweight right. ticks all the boxes as an amazing all-rounder so it's kind of working out which bike's going to tick the boxes for you you know you're more of a cross-country trail kind of guy or a downhill guy just picking those uh you know those bikes and seeing mm. which ticks the boxes for you more than the, i like the spectral uh, yeah yeah, yeah that, i like the spectral you're absolutely shredding that actually. yeah no, can I'm... you do a video on it i did yeah how hard can you shred an e-bike hmm? I'm out here at Windhill Bike Park, and there's loads of jumps, loads of little cool technical things. I'm gonna push this thing to its limit all day and see how much fun it is, and if that weight's gonna annoy me. Right, straight to the jumps. Way! Oh, wow. Fancy a Bev, mate. That wasn't the question. That's the guy's name for asking the question. What's the question? The question is, does standing on these electric motors have an adverse effect on them? Reasons, my 2019 high bike Esturo Trekking has had its motor replaced as a rattling sound appeared after doing just this. Does it sound like a 40 motor or does standing on the pedals cause issues? Do you know, it's, uh, noises in motors mm -hmm. freak me out. Scary, and no matter it? what, yeah. like motor vehicles, mm -hmm. motorbikes, everything, yeah. just freak me out. But obviously these motors are designed to be ridden hard, doesn't matter if you're stood up, you know, cranking hard or sat down in the saddle, there shouldn't be a problem with any mm. of those motors. So suggest you get it back to your dealer, see if they can get a sorted under warranty. Yeah, yeah. Get back out on the road. For sure. Get it checked out. Nice, we've got this one in from Al Q. He's saying, are e-bikes becoming more sophisticated than motorbikes? Oh, I think so. There's quite a lot going on in there. Yeah, you've got loads of tech. Um, mm -hmm. I think some of the bikes that are at the forefront of the technology, like the great bikes, uh, specialised, things like that. There's a load of tech that's going on, you know, yeah. all the Bluetooth connectivity. I think the Grape has like online uh, front and rear video recording, so you can tap in and rewind really? your ride, wow. and share it to the world. It's got like a that. SIM card built into it, sure. it's got like live tracking, yeah. um, sat nav. Um, what else we got on there? It's just so much stuff can you, on there. That can you look at all data and see where you're pedaling, how much yeah, you're yeah, pedaling, exactly. how much RPM, yeah, yeah. watts, kilowatt? Mm -hmm. that, now that's way more than a motor. Yeah, I think I think it's, especially the smartphone, the like app stuff, and the mm. connectivity that you're getting from that, and all yeah. the battery tech, motor tech, all combined. I think we might be taking a little step 
forward more than the motorbike. So mm. yeah, it's definitely interesting. And this is in from Boilface, triple seven. Oh, Boilface, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I have a de-restricted Levo for private land only, and I find myself spinning out of gears. How can I improve my top end speed? Put a bigger sprocket on there? Yeah, obviously you fit a front uh, sprocket on there is gonna be the cheapest option. Just make sure your components aren't that worn because if you change out of sync, it's gonna cause a lot of grinding, a lot of noise going on, especially under load. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest chain where you can go on a Levo is a 36 tooth before it starts fouling the swing arm. Yeah. Um, and on the back as well, it's where you can make a few gains. Usually you're like 10 or 11 on the smallest sprocket, but you can go to a nine tooth by running the E13 system, mm -hmm. which is going to be your smallest rear cog you're going to get on a cassette, mm -hmm. but that only fits on an XD driver as well. So yeah, 36 tooth chain ring, nine tooth on the rear. Sounds expensive. Sounds expensive, but it's going to be bloody fast. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that all the questions answered? Yep, I'm afraid wow, so. Like, you're end getting of, into it, weren't you? Well, I was getting into it. I'm learning a lot actually coming on to it, asking Ambien. But if you guys want to be featured on next week's show, ask your questions down below in the comments box, hashtag AskEMBN, and it could be you yeah. on next week's show. Don't forget to hit that globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad stuff. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week. See ya.